working with your supervisor and managing the supervisor student relationship. These topics are usually not discussed. And that is because um, we take it for granted that nothing as such is unique about the supervisor or the issues concerning supervisor. <clears throat> so today, I'm going to share this uh, platform with the Dean of uh, Faculty of Science Education, Professor Ruby Hansen. She is going to take um, on managing the supervisor student relationship. I'm going to start with the working with your supervisor. Actually, what we are going to do is a lot of uh, giving you our experiences, what we have encountered when we were also students, and of course, when <clears throat> we became uh, supervisors. But I would like to start like this, that um, do we really have issues that are important to be discussed when it comes to supervisory issues concerning theses of students? It is very important in the sense that, um, and I can say something about my experience. I have uh, students who truncated their studies because uh, they couldn't cope with the issues of a thesis writing. And there are some examples also which uh, we have heard about uh, the supervisors who are really very hard on their students and then the students they find it very hard to to cope so i think for this i have to say thank you to iris for bringing this bringing in this issue to be discussed <laughs> one thing which i have um, noticed is that uh, here <clears throat> in many of the African uh, universities, we don't have things we call pro-seminars. Seminars are the usual ones which we, we do regularly. But pro-seminars, from my own experience when I was a student in the University of Uvascula, Finland, is a kind of a group seminars. You will go for the normal seminars where you know they teach you all the in and outs about uh, <clears throat> conducting your research and writing your thesis. But then the pro seminar is usually conducted by the supervisor in the sense that uh, the supervisor can have four, six students to be supervised. So he or she and the students will organize, agree on time when they are to meet. And it's going to be really a meeting discussing the particular issues of the students writing the thesis. Usually, a student will present what he or she has done so far concerning the thesis, and then the group will check, critique, give comments, and then ideas about what, what to do. So the supervisor is usually the one who is to, so to say, lead this kind of a discussion. Working with uh, your thesis supervisor is actually like uh, an unwritten contract because we know that well, you have been given a supervisor or you have chosen a supervisor, there's nothing written, I mean, like what should be done, what should, be, should not be done and so on and so forth. The only thing which you can say is written as a document is what the graduate school provides as a kind of guide, which of course, the supervisor and the students, they have to, to follow. It is important to know what a thesis supervisor is, and that is because you want to work with somebody you see as 
your lecturer or as your boss. And you must know the ground rules, which are very important, so that there wouldn't be any complexity in your relationship with the supervisor. So the unwritten contracts, however, must be followed because that is important for the relationship between the supervisor and the student. Then again, what I'm, I'm trying to make as an input, a new input into this discussion is that um, we are going to see many changes or at least some changes in how the students contact their supervisors and how the supervisors react you know, to the students. So in this case, I would say the university must be proactive in helping the supervisors and the students to carry out the supervisory work in a very conducive uh, atmosphere. For example, the supervisor may be somebody who is very careful about health. And if the student has to go and visit or have discussion with the supervisor, there will be a kind of a agreement on how to meet, what to do, whether you've got to have your, your nose mask on or not. And then of course, maybe the sanitizer and so on. This is a kind of a, a, kind of a new normal which we have also to consider when talking about uh, the supervisors. We have common problems, which I think are what we should understand and try to appreciate. So these common problems I'm saying here are like a TC supervisor may be overrated usually because uh, when a student is going to a supervisor, <clears throat> the, the, the impression is that, well, my supervisor is a super person who probably should know everything I want to do. And from the cartoon which you see here, you see a kind of a conversation between the supervisor and the student which is the purpose of a PhD. Now we are talking mainly about the PhD students. And of course, this also concerns the MPhil. The purpose of a PhD is for you to become an independent scholar. That is very true because your thesis should be owned by you. It is your topic. It is what you want to do research on. But then the supervisor have a lot of things to do with it. So the supervisor in many cases, or in all cases, will want you to be independent, think independently, and bring your ideas independently. But then they are saying, if I tell you what to do all the time, that defeats the purpose. And that is because many students, which is normal, they always think that a supervisor should be able to tell them what to do about their research or about their thesis, what should be done, how it should be done, and so on. But then if that is done, the supervisor here is saying that, well, that defeats the purpose of making you an independent scholar. Then it goes on, so I can do whatever I want. No, you still have to do what I say, said the supervisor. And then, of course, the student confused said that, uh, but you don't, you won't tell me what that is. And the supervisor said, yes, it is on purpose. He's being confused on purpose, not all the time. And I think uh, what we are trying to see and hear here is that uh, the supervisor is saying that, well, you have to show that you are a serious student and of course a supervisor must be able to drill you somehow to make you work as expected then of course um, you have supervisors that might be underrated and that is because sometimes you discuss with your supervisor 
maybe not so much fast in what you want to do. But please don't underrate your supervisor. Then the misunderstanding of supervisors is very, very critical. And I think um, the dean will talk about that, the relationship. And uh, in this case, especially when it is a female student to a male supervisor or vice versa, you see that there could be some understandings and usually, you know, it's about, uh, you know, about what uh, they call um, harassment. But in some cases also, the supervisor might be under misunderstood. Maybe what he meant, maybe smiling, very friendly, it could be misunderstood that, oh, he's coming on with something, which is not so. Then we have the problems of a supervisor being overbearing. That shouldn't be. A supervisor should be one who will give the latitude for students to play on and then to do what he or she will want to do. Then another thing is that usually students don't understand or appreciate that a supervisor usually has many students to supervise. In some cases, maybe four, maybe six. So students, they want that, oh, when I talk to my supervisor, I want to see him or her, it should be so. Or when he takes my paper to read, he should be able to read it on time and give me on time. That is something which should be done when you are discussing with your super, supervisor. There's another thing which, uh, I want to emphasize here. Supervisor is not a know-all person. Not at all, nobody is perfect. Even if the supervisor is very, very conversant with the subject he or she is dealing with, it's still possible that he can learn from the student. So here I have some certain skills which I think the supervisor must possess the communication skills because usually it's very important the way we communicate with each other. You know, if communication is poor, it can actually put off the student or the supervisor. Then approachability and empathy. Sometimes you have students who are just uh, some, somehow, you know, troubled and without notice, he or she could come to the office of the supervisor, which is not advisable anyway. But once a while, if that happens, the supervisor should be able to approach the student in, a, in an empathic way, in a way that uh, you know, the student will be welcome. It could be a kind of a problem that the student thinks, oh, let me go to my supervisor and I want to solve it with him or her. Then of course, the management skills are very important. That means how do you manage the student? How do you manage the work? Time and so on and so forth. Then adaptability. A supervisor must be able to adapt, not all the time, but you'll be able to adapt sometimes to the condition where both of you find yourself. That means the supervisor and the student. Then of course, the supervisor must be confident and positive because usually if you have a student you are supervising and then in many cases, let's say about 80% of your words are like, uh, you know, negative, then you are discouraging the student. Then of course, transparency, the supervisor must be transparent in the sense that you have some ideas which probably the supervisor might have gotten from somewhere, the supervisor must be able to say it straight away that, well, this idea, I got it from so, 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 source. So it's transparency. And then of course, uh, what the supervisor is doing with the student must be also transparent. Then we have the teamwork. 
And that is what I have just shown you that a supervisor having more than three, four students must be able to make them work together as a team. It doesn't matter that uh, they don't have the same topic to work on. But there are some issues which they can work on as a team, which the supervisor will lead them. And then, of course, um, as I said, that the supervisor is not a know-all person. The supervisor should also be willing to learn, especially when you are dealing with a PhD candidate. It's very, very important because um, you have many of these uh, PhD candidates, they are already at work. And even some of them, they are already experts in their profession. But because they want to have a PhD certificate, they come back to the school, to the university to have it. And of course, they will need a supervisor. So the supervisor must be able to learn new things from this kind of uh, students. Then, of course, choosing a supervisor is very, very important. These supervisors are faculty members who mentor, I emphasize mentor, graduate students in their research. A supervisor, especially when you are dealing with MPhil and PhD students, because you wouldn't have many of them anyway, you must be able to mentor them in the sense that uh, you are dealing with somebody you will want to be proud of in the future that yes, I managed his or her PhD thesis. You want to see somebody in the future, you will say yes, he or she used the methods that I just discovered. In case there are some, uh, you know, professors or supervisors who are having some projects that are really, you know, unique to them and which they are trying to, especially when it is a natural science, if you are trying to discover some new, new methods to do some things. So that one is where you have to mentor because you can get a student who after the PhD will now be expounding all what uh, you are doing, what you are, you are teaching. Then the PhD, yeah, I'm saying many research-based graduate programs expect students to identify a prospective supervisor prior to applying for admission. I think that is not much done in uh, many of the African or the universities in Africa. In Europe and uh, from where I studied, where I studied, this is done, you know, when, and I think um, many of our young, younger ones who are applying to study abroad, they will notice that they will send them the information that they should write, and then they will send what they have written to the university. The university will call a meeting, they will go through it. If they think they don't have anybody appropriate you know, to supervise such work, they will just humbly decline to admit the PhD student. This is normally for the PhD students. And I think probably it makes the work easier when you are applying and then you have stated what you want to do. And then the university where you applied to is able to find you a proper supervisor then when you get there, you wouldn't be just a floating. You have somebody who is interested in your work and then he or she as a supervisor will be able to work closely with you. And then in some cases also, you could write for admission to a university and maybe what you are proposing is something new to them, but they are very interested in that subject, in that problem they may give you admission, but they will make sure that they get a supervisor that will be able to work with you, you know, very closely and intensively. It may not be, you know, from the same university, but they will make sure that they get, usually 
the universities that are research universities like what uh, UEW is trying to become, having IRIS, it should be able to hunt, you know, for the possible supervisors for students. And uh, I think um, the faculties in the university should be able to approach, for example, IRIS, if they are looking for supervisor, which IRIS maybe from experience and so on, will say, oh, we know this social so -so person, we have his contact or her contact, we work with him or her, so we could request him or her to be a supervisor. Because when you are doing your PhD, I think the supervisor must not be limited just to the university where, where you are. Then in some cases, you have the PhD or even MPhil student who will be so lucky that when you are studying in the university, a researcher, maybe senior researcher or professor will get a big project that will need to have students, PhD students or MPhil students. So if the professor or researcher sees you as very, very prominent or somebody who could be part of this um, project, they will easily just um, request you to join. And joining means that you have already taken your subject, your title, what you will work on, which means it should be part of that project. You, be, you should be interested in that project. And of course, before the supervisor will select you, he or she must have known that, oh, that is something you are interested in. And that is how also supervisors or professors in particular build around him or her a kind of team that will continue to propagate the ideas of his or her research and so on and so forth. Then of course, the one we know very well is that usually supervisors are chosen by the, by the faculty. Then thesis supervisor stroke advisor. The thesis supervisor, he or she is the key person your graduate degree in your graduate degree program. You know, he or she is the main person that we can say the decision maker for your work. A supervisor in the general sense of it is a person who sets goals for performance and deadlines. That is very important. And sometimes that could irritate students, but it must not because a supervisor must be able to show that yes, he is pushing you to work and work hard. So there will be a kind of a set goals for performance and deadlines. Then supervisor should be available to help their graduate students at every stage of, for example, formulation of their research projects, establishing methodologies and discussing results, presentation and possible publication of thesis through dissertation. I have mentioned before now that the graduate student, especially the PhD student must be independent. That is very true, but that does not mean that the supervisor will just leave him or her floating. No, the supervisor should be able and should be ready to help the students in formulation, formulation of the research projects. That means the student comes, the supervisor must be able to check how he or she has formulated the research projects and do you know, the necessary adjustment if it is needed. Then of course, establishing methodologies because the supervisor is supposed to know the methods that are to be used in some of these uh, researches. So he or she should be able to introduce or able to suggest the methodologies that the student should, should use. And then of course, discussing the results, very important. Once you have your results, the, 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 the supervisor must be able to discuss it with you. Then the presentation, and I think that is uh, important. And I see that, um, well, I don't know of any other faculties, maybe they do it, but a uh, faculty of uh, science education have been doing this, you know, getting the PhD graduates 
to come and do presentation of the findings concerning their work. So it's a kind of a, maybe, it's, it's a kind of like a pre-viva presentation because you get critiques, you get ideas, you get suggestions, and that helps you, you know, to go into the viva proper. This should be a kind of a thing a supervisor must encourage. And of course, it is always a kind of a, a kind of a happiness for a student if the supervisor seeing that well the student's work is good and then you are already telling him or her that well we can have a publication out of your thesis or dissertation you know it encourages is a kind of a you know it's a kind of an incentive for that student to work more in the in the future so which means and i think uh, maybe it's coming here in many cases nowadays in Europe, you are even told that uh, you must have some publications, you know, to have your, your degree. But of course, the publications must be related to the thesis or the work you, you, are, you are doing. But this is advisor, because sometimes we interchangeably use this supervisor and advisor. Advisor is not a supervisor, see? So it's one that uh, you say can over advise, but the su supervisor is the manager, is so to say the CEO, the person who is having the task of overseeing the work of a person or a group. An advisor can be from another faculty or even from another university. For example, if somebody, let's say at the Faculty of Science Education, is doing, the, is doing something concerning maybe, uh, let's say, concerning the issues of um, fermentation maybe how to teach it in the classroom and so on, is not out of place for such, for, for such to be seen as something that supervisor can even organize somebody from outside the university, maybe from a, a, a company, or maybe even uh, you know, from, from our local areas to come, and that is where you have the pro seminar, he or she will talk about what they do what is fermentation, how it, they see it, and so on and so forth. It helps the student to shape his or her work very well. It's the same thing with others in the social sciences and, 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 and so on. Then, of course, um, a good supervisor will find and invite such an expert. For example, in social sciences, where you have a people doing something with a uh, social work, or maybe about a, um, you know, child care and the motherhood, it's not out of place to invite somebody from a social office to come and, you know, not for the whole, you know, the, 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 the students, all the students doing PhD, but for the students that are with the supervisor, the supervisor can arrange just a short meeting for them to listen to the so-called ad advisor. So advisor is useful in getting extra support, but not overruling supervisor's instructions. And then also in some cases, some advisors may be, you know, very good. And when they talk, they advise the students, students may even see it as a way of not going to the supervisor for advice. That shouldn't be. The supervisor must know what you are discussing with your advisor. And of course, the supervisor should not take it wrongly if you tell him or her that, well, your advisor said it should be done this way, it should be done that way. It's just for you and your supervisors to sit down and think about what the advisor you know, gave to you. This is an example of an advisor, an extra hand, they call it. They are usually called in to come and just talk about the issues. For example, if we are talking about uh, 
the difficulties, the challenges of teaching uh, science in the schools. It's possible to call maybe the headmaster of a school where we know that uh, science is well taught there, or even the GES director to just come and talk to the four, six students you have about the issues. Some students may not be doing anything with that, but it also gives them some kind of a possibility to know more about what is, uh, what is going on. And it could even give them ideas on what to do with their own, uh, with their own studies. Then research supervision is a task that requires a set of abilities. In many cases, an academic begins research supervision as a novice. He, she develops the abilities and skills through experience. Because this is one thing also, how do we get somebody to become a supervisor? Because of course, you have already the professors, the senior researchers and so on. But then one can say that, okay, before they became professors, senior you know, researchers, what were they? How were they supervising? There's a method which um, is used in the university where I studied. The beginning supervisors will need to understand the dynamics and practicalities of supervision before they embark on this process. So in many cases, they make the beginning supervisors start as second co-supervisor. Because in many cases, we have uh, two supervisors, one main, one co-supervisor when it comes to PhD you know, work especially. But then in many cases, some universities, they get the beginning supervisors to start as the second co-supervisor. So he or she learns on the job. And of course, uh, you know, he or she must be a good researcher, which the faculty has uh, actually, you know, located before inviting him or her to be second supervisor. So from there, you know, it's a kind of promotion, which is not a written promotion, but when he or she starts to know more, then they give students to him or her to supervise. Then contacting your supervisor, which I mentioned a bit before, it is very important to know that supervisor is also a human being. The supervisor has his or her up and downs. So, and of course, we should watch the type of supervisors we have. So once you know the type, try to make sure that you don't go against his or her rules. But generally, it is very important when you are contacting your, your, your supervisor, and I think this is a very British, very British, because uh, in US, you know, and uh, some other Scandinavian countries, it's not so much important that, for example, when you are sending a mail or a letter or maybe WhatsApp nowadays to your supervisor, you must start with their prof, their doc, their something, something, reference, and so on. But, uh, you know, that is the British uh, system, and we are still using it because in some cases, some people, they, they get offended when you don't use their proper titles. Then, of course, if you are sending an email message, please explain the purpose of your email message. You see, it's not good to start with your supervisor. You are sending a message, then you said, oh, I hope you are doing well. You see, it's not a proper way to, to, to start your, your message. Be brief and clear about exactly what you want to say or ask. Thank your supervisor in advance for his cooperation or answers. And of course, use an appropriate closing. That depends on where you are. You know, I mean, the, the society where you find yourself. Then asking for a meeting, and that is communication skills per se. See, when you are requesting for a meeting, especially you, the student, requesting the supervisor for a meeting, the, you can 
you know, usually say you would like to request a meeting with the supervisor as early as week, you know, to discuss, then insert reason for the meeting. And so also the supervisor must be able to do if you have read the document given to you by your students, I think it will be proper and good if you can send a message to him or her that at social time you would like to meet him or her. And then the reason is this, is this, is this. Then be aware that uh, your busy schedule is also making it very important that you have a time frame of the meeting of your time. Because as a supervisor, you must be able to say that well, you are going to use just one hour or two hours with your students. And that is what it should be. The time frame is very important. And then, of course, for the students here, you always uh, thank your supervisor for considering to meet you the time you have uh, requested. Then always try as much as possible to meet your supervisor when he or she requests. That is very important, even though the supervisor should also be able to adapt to your timetable. But in the normal and usual case, the student must be able to adapt to the supervisor's uh, timetable. Then one thing which is very important to, to understand and to know, because um, this irritates many supervisors, if you send in a kind of document and is really battered with a lot of mistakes, especially grammatical mistakes, you know, your supervisor is not expected to proofread your thesis. So please, it's not out of uh, the way if before you are sending, especially when your work is coming to completion, to send your work first to somebody who can proofread for you before sending it to your supervisor so that uh, it will make the work of your supervisor easier. Then of course, uh, there are ways to impress a PhD supervisor even before having agreed to, to supervise you. Communicate clearly with your supervisor. Be knowledgeable about your field. You have researched a bit about them, and that is uh, for supervisor must be able to, to know a lot of uh, research is done in that area. Then, of course, you must have a long-term plan with your supervisor. Then you have a project plan be proactive, then of course, you must be able to write and write and write and write, producing document, 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 because it helps you and the supervisor to go through and come up with better things that you should do. So as a supervisor, documents, documents, documents should not be something you should be afraid of. You must be able to read and read and read. And then, of course, network and promote your research, especially if the supervisor is the owner of a project which you belong to. The supervisor must be able to network and uh, promote the, the research. Then, of course, frequency of meeting. And as I said, supervisors, they have more than one student more than two students. Some, sometimes they have uh, four, six students, and sometimes they even have so much more, which again, a supervisor should be wary of. A supervisor should not have too many students to supervise, because then you will not be able to give your best to all of them. If you are having like 20 students to supervise, that will be somehow not normal. So here, I tried to use my own experience that once a month may be too low side in the sense that uh, if you have to meet your student once a month, you yourself will even forget, you know, where you were the last time he or she came to you or the last time you talked to him or her. 
once a week would be too often because uh, you must be able to give your students what to do and give at least maybe about two weeks unless it is very urgent you want the work to be done quickly i think once every two weeks is recommended once you have scheduled the time then your students they know when to to meet you again i'm still on contacting your supervisors do always check whether your supervisor would like you to contact him or her at the time you are trying to request. Then do research their current research interests and activities. That means, um, and this actually should have come before now, this, uh, this um, slide. Because when you are choosing a supervisor or a supervisor is being chosen for you, you will have the, I would say, you must, not have, you must be able to go into the research interests and activities of the supervisor. And of course, the supervisor also must be able to understand that he or she is interested in your research work. Because there are some supervisors, they are not really interested in the work of the student but maybe because they just have to be supervisor then they are supervisor that is where we see always the supervisor opinion clashing with the students and in some cases students become intimidated and they will almost give up some they will give up so and when you are contacting your supervisor if it is just a kind of a quick quick um, or maybe an announced meeting and it is coming from you do keep it brief very brief and of course if it is the supervisor who is inviting the student and it is an emergency he or she should also keep it brief and when you are maybe for the first time or the initial time you are contacting your supervisor or you are meeting as a group of students he or she is supervising don't start by asking for funding you know that could actually push off the, the supervisor that oh you are just looking for funding are you not interested in your research shouldn't be funding you'll be talking about some make that mistake then of course for the first time here, this one, I took it from a source, which says, don't attach your full research proposal for the first email, especially if you are sending the you know, email to your supervisor. Then changing the supervisor, is it possible for me to change my supervisor even after working with him or her for some time? Yes, I think it is possible especially if you have not gone too far with the work because it will be difficult to change so many of the methodologies the ideas which that supervisor you know has given to to you to manage see in many cases the supervisor also can approach the dean or the faculty to change your supervisor for you if he or she thinks he or she cannot actually guide you the right way he or she can it shouldn't be by force a supervisor should be able to say oh no i cannot do this please find another supervisor for for these students and of course in many cases it is based on the subject the topic the, 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 the type of uh, research which the student is doing. Then, of course, um, if you are able, which many of us we have been able to do, and uh, many students are still doing it, to able to work thoroughly with your supervisor, successfully with your supervisor, and it comes to uh, a happy end, then you can thank your supervisor 
in um, Europe, which I know in many cases, you know, give the supervisors opportunity to continue to be proud of you. And that is by showing gratitude to your PhD advisor or supervisor after graduation. So what do we do usually in Europe is that you send a nice thank you card, which I think is uh, not, not, uh, not common here in, in Africa. You don't send thank you card. You know, when you thank, you thank. And uh, it's, not, it's not out of place. <clears throat> I don't think it's, a, it's not corruption. Because if you finished very well with your supervisor, yes, you can thank him or her with uh, a present. Maybe you buy something, then you give her as a, as a present. I don't think it's against the, the rules. What is against the rule is that you don't start bombarding your supervisor when you are still working with him or her. Then, of course, um, in the Scandinavian countries, and I think in other countries also, there's something which we call a kind of a faculty get-together party for the student. So the supervisor is the one who will share that party. And of course, he must be invited so that uh, you have uh, the, the enjoyment. And there is what we can call a Thanksgiving giving party. So I'm going to end here. And I say thank you for listening. And uh, of course, uh, the Dean Wessel Hansen will come in. And for sure, there will be some overlapping, I think, uh, to be able to, to manage it. This is for discussions and uh, comments where necessary. Thank you very much. So thank, thank, you, Dr. Manja, thank, for thank you very much. Your insight and presentation. Uh, before Prof. Ruby comes in, there are only three questions. We take yeah. them or wait for the, yeah. the, the second presentation. Maybe. I would suggest that uh, we can wait for Prof's presentation so that uh, probably the answer will come from there or then both of us will have something to give us okay. answers. All right. So once again, thank you so much, Prof. Kula, for sharing your thoughts with us on this topic. Uh, students and then other participants, as you are well aware, the topic is in two parts. So the first part has been taken by Professor Kola working with your supervisor. The second part will be managing the supervisor-student relationship. And that one will be taken by Professor Ruby Hansen. And for those of us who don't know Professor Ruby Hansen, he's currently the Dean of the Faculty of Science Education. And also the immediate past Vice Chancellor of the University of Education. So she's a big woman. She's a seasoned academic and she, ha she has conducted a lot of research and has interest in several parts of research, especially in the sciences. So Professor Rubik Hansen, you are welcome. Your students are waiting for Thank all, you very all much. They, have been, they have been anticipating to hear from you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, moderator. Good morning to you all, fellow panelists and students. Okay, so I'll be speaking on the topic, managing the supervisor-student relationship. And this will be the order of the presentation. We are aware that, like my co-presenter has said, we need this kind of relationship, but often there are issues. So we need to know as um, supervisors exactly how to behave, our role and how to manage it. And the supervisees, that is our students, our PhD students or MPhil students, also have to know the part that they have to play and how well they can manage this situation. So I begin by saying the supervisor and the graduate students have a kind of interpersonal relationship. And this kind of relationship is very important 
to the graduate project work and its completion. Therefore, the graduate student needs to manage himself or herself well. Again, it is important for the supervisor because it tells on you a lot and it goes towards your promotion and many other things. Therefore, it ought to be considered seriously. Supervision in our part of the world is often under the guidance of at least two faculty members. And this is what the graduate students should know. Supervision is a kind of pedagogy. It is something that must be developed, that must be known. The previous speaker talked about how young faculty members can become good supervisors by understanding seasoned um, graduate supervisors. Indeed, it's something that has to be learned and developed over the years for effectiveness. Supervisory relationship is a way of connecting a supervisor who is often more experienced, notes often more experienced than a supervisee. So when it happens that a supervisee tries to show that they are more knowledgeable than their supervisor, then there is a kind of imbalance and a problem begins to develop. Therefore, this should be recognized. As the previous speaker said, often a supervisee is assigned to a supervisor who is knowledgeable in the area in which a supervisee wishes to do their work. This is a special kind of relationship. It's an academic relationship geared towards a goal, an academic goal, of professional development and the completion of a supervisee's project work. Therefore, there is always a giving and a taking, and it must be done respectfully. What is the importance of all this, one might say? I have already reiterated that, but then I'll do it a bit more. This has to be done to give the supervisee or the graduate student a kind of guidance towards the completion of the academic research work. It is also to support excellent graduate supervision processes, practices. For the supervisor, you avail yourself as a role model for young ones to pattern their lives also on. The supervision also contributes to excellence in research. It boosts both the supervisee, the supervisor, and the university's image. And this kind of relationship results in successful academic outcomes, as I already said. It helps us, especially the supervisee, to learn about interpersonal relationships for a better future. This is a relationship where you deal one-on-one -on -one with a person. And because of the closeness of this kind of relationship, um, if you behave well, you learn well, you tend to develop affable characteristics that tends to push you on later in life. But of course, like any relationship, they are bound to be problems. How you manage the problem that arises will tell a lot in the end, especially on you, the graduate student. Relationships are often meant to be um, a give and take affair, but we know that it is not always like that. Sometimes there is an upper hand for one person and the relationship becomes something else. The relationship, as we heard from the previous speaker, could be a, an overbearing one. It could be domineering. It could be sour and all kinds of things, anything but unpleasant. As a supervisor or a graduate student, you have a goal. Would you want to move on and achieve that goal in future? Will you just give up when a relationship between you and your um, supervisor turns sour, 
this is a very important or a very critical stage for you. How you manage the situation will tell a lot on your completion of your project work or not. Okay. Tension could exist between the role of the supervisor and the role of the student. This comes about when one of us does not know their role too well. Therefore, in order to have a good relationship, in order to um, be able to manage the relationship between you and your supervisor, you need to know your role in this relationship. You even need to know the role that your supervisor has to play or assume in this kind of relationship. So it, it, it's the onus is on you to know your part and even to know your supervisor's part because the stake is larger for you in this relationship more than for your supervisor. So what do you have to know about the role that your supervisor has to play so that you don't misinterpret some of your supervisor's actions in this relationship. I, I am sure that there are some supervisors also listening to me. A supervisor's role are as, as, uh, as outlined here. As a supervisor, you must anticipate situations. You are more experienced than the supervisor. It is on you, the supervisor, who the supervisor is looking up to, to set the ground rules. We already heard this one. You need to set ground rules. Make sure the ground rules are not lopsided. Set fair but firm ground rules. When the supervisor comes to see you with their work, you need to remember to make constructive comments. You need to ensure clear and frequent communication. Sometimes we communicate certain things to our stu stu students and the language we use is not too clear. The student has to come to you for clarification, but sometimes they do not come. Sometimes the relationship is such that they just cannot come. Therefore, we need to make our communication to our students very clear. We need to communicate with them on our needs, on our demands, as early as possible. They can also be as busy as we are, so we mustn't communicate with them at very short intervals. The supervisee can also respectfully draw the supervisor's attention when such demands are made at very short notices, and they are made quite often too. Remember that the goal is to maintain a good working relationship. It's only a good working relationship that can see us through our project work. We must agree on mutual expectations. Of course, this should be set out when we are making our ground, our ground rules. Everything must be very clear to especially our graduate students. And momentum must be maintained. What I mean by momentum must be maintained is that the, the pace at which we meet, the pace at which the graduate student submits work, the pace at which the supervisor um, reads through and make comments and sends work back to the supervisor should be done at a constant rate. It keeps both of us on our toes and the work proceeds as expected. But we must remember that our supervisees are all different. Everybody is unique and they have their own individual characteristics, needs and whatever. In the same way, supervisors are all different. Therefore, a one size fits all um, role or rules or expectations cannot be mapped out for every supervisee or every supervisor. We need to study each other and then carve out what will be appropriate for us all so that we can work amiably. We must bear in mind as supervisors 
that our relationship with our Father is, in, is to prepare them for the future. They could be in positions where we, as supervisors now, will also need their help in the future. Therefore, respect must exist in this kind of relationship. We must prepare them well so that we can meet with them well in the future. This comes to us knowing our roles. We as supervisors have so many roles to play. We are mentors, we are trainers, we are supporters, we are critics, we are fellow researchers in tune with our supervisees. However, we will not tell you the supervisee what to do at any stage of your work. You must remember that the work is entirely yours. Therefore, looking up to your supervisor to tell you exactly what to do at each stage might mar the relationship between you and your supervisor. You might think your supervisor is not helpful enough. But remember, the work is entirely yours. It is a relationship anyway, but the work is yours. Therefore, you must have a way of understanding, interpreting, and preempting your supervisor who has multiple roles to play in those relationships, actions all the time. Your supervisors will provide advice and guidance to help you develop appropriate practice, to refine your ideas, to find appropriate literature, to understand the rules in the game and the graduate school, as well as the university as a whole, and the regulations. I often look for literature for my students. It's important that students get the um, requisite literature to read so that they can be guided by what other researchers have done and not by what I will advise them on. Therefore, when your supervisors direct you to read certain literatures, they give you links and so on and so forth, you have to do well to go through the literature that they have given to you. It could be very helpful to you in the end. So the supervisors will also provide feedback on your work. When feedback is given, often, especially when the tracking format is used, I have observed that often students go to say, accept all, and they quickly push the work back to you. And because they have accepted everything, often comments that you make in between the lines are there. They do not even read through the work again before they submit the work to you as a supervisor. This could be a bit irritating sometimes. And often when the supervisor sends the work back and say, you didn't do as expected, that they cannot understand. They think that because they have accepted the comments made by the supervisor, that should be it. They forget to go through the work a second time and see the lapses there. This should not be, you know, um, I wouldn't want to say tolerated, but this should not be a habit of our supervisors. Remember that each comment must be reflected upon and be worked on accordingly. Your supervisors again will explain the importance of broad-based learning an acquisition of transferable skills for your future to you. The supervisor will, as you heard earlier, hammer on you developing good communication skills, personal leadership skills, and a team spirit attitude also. The supervisor's role is very important in this relationship. The supervisor's role enhances students' learning. It helps students to develop dialogue. It helps to develop the multifaceted growth of students. 
And as I said earlier, we are role models for the students. They learn from us. The way we speak when they come to meet with us, the kind of comments we make, and so on and so forth, how we guide them are all issues that students look to to also learn. We must bear this in mind as supervisors so that we put up our best behaviors all the time. Our students to also learn from us. And mom respect must be given. In order for a supervisor to have a good relationship with their student, and in order for the student to be able to enjoy the relationship, it's important for us as supervisors to consider certain things before we take on students. Do we have time and resources and the requisite knowledge to supervise a student on a particular topic that they have been given or they have chosen? Like we heard in the earlier presentation, in this part of our world and in our institution in particular, often students are assigned to lecturers by the graduate coordinator and the head of the department. When a student is assigned to us, we need to ask ourselves, are we taking on too many students or we have enough students to accommodate some more? If we are overburdened, certainly we will not be able to have a good relationship with our supervisee. Um, with, with our supervisee. Therefore, we need to find out whether we can accommodate any more students, whether we have the kind of knowledge in the area that a student is going to work on, whether um, the student is someone that um, we find workable with. Does the student possess the adequate academic background and experience to undertake the, their chosen project? Do their goals and expectations, or are their goals and expectations consistent with expected outcomes? Will we be able to work with the students after all of these com considerations? So then we need to look at compatibility. You might sometimes want a student to write a few lines for you. You look at the way they communicate in writing, and then you, you make an informed decision whether you want them to do extended writing for you to find out whether their writing style, their thoughts, and so on and so forth are in tune with yours. Can their personal and cultural challenges be addressed from the way you see them? We must remember that it's only a good working relationship that can see us through our supervision and can see the supervisee through their writing. Therefore, all of these things need to be considered and addressed so that we can have a good working relationship. Okay. Is the student or the supervisee one who can um, accept comments that you make who can work with other members in your team and so on and so forth. So that was for the supervisor. And now the student. What do you have to do? You have been given admission, you, have, you are done with your taught course, you have been assigned a supervisor. How do you work with the supervisor? How do you manage your relationship with the supervisor? You need to act maturely in this case. Whatever happens, you need to act maturely. Of course, you could always ask for a change of supervisor, but note that the new supervisor might want to find out what happened in your relationship with the former supervisor and for what reasons are you now coming to him or her. Therefore, you need to act maturely. You need to plan and be proactive in your relationship. You must know what you want, what to expect from that kind of relationship, as far as your thesis is concerned. You need to be clear about deadlines that will be set. You and your supervisor do this together. 
be clear about deadlines, and do well to meet them. Quite often, supervisors cannot accommodate students who cannot keep to timelines. If you cannot keep to a timeline, do well to inform your supervisor well ahead of time. So you have to know what you want and what you expect. You need to ask for advice and information when you need it. And remember that communication is central to the completion of your work. It's central to your emotional makeup. It's central to your cognitive and um, cognitive makeup. It's central to your psychological makeup. Therefore, what do you need to do in this relationship? Remember that a research degree is not about development of a thesis. It's not just completing your thesis, but making you a researcher. You need to take responsibility for your own progress towards completion of the degree. As indicated earlier, you need to demonstrate commitment. You need to show a lot of research integrity and carry out the work in an ethical manner. By this, I mean to say, you don't uh, have to plagiarize. If there is any problem, your supervisor is there. We heard about advisors. You could ask your supervisor to bring in an advisor to give you greater exposition on what you intend to do. So you need to be and display a lot of honesty in the kind of work you are doing. Develop a plan for each stage of the thesis and manage this effectively. Make it clear when you do not understand your supervisor's expectations. The supervisor knows about this. I said this when I was talking about the responsibilities of the supervisor. You need to be familiar with the university and graduate school requirements also. There is a time limit for you to work. Therefore, you need to plan each stage of your work effectively, as I said earlier, and work within time limits. You need to set limits for your time, for yourself which will even be shorter than the limit you have set for your, together with your supervisor, so that you can work within time limit. If you need specialized training for any part of your research, do discuss that with your supervisor, who will make sure that you go through the training that is required for any part of your work. Keep records of your activities. Sometimes there could be problems. A supervisor may say, I gave him or her timeline, I did this and I did that, the uh, supervisor hasn't been coming on time. But if you have record, you have kept record of your work, it saves you from all of these troubles. There will be evidence to show you have always kept um, the time assigned to you, you have reported all the time, you have done all your corrections and so on and so forth. Throughout the supervision, you need to behave respectfully and respond positively to advice. Remember that I said your supervisor is someone who often knows a little more than you do. That is why you have been assigned to them. Therefore, respect the kind of advice they give. In any case, when you do not understand something, respectfully and humbly ask them to explain further. Learn how to manage yourself with your supervisor. Report regularly, as we have said, I have said, and report fully on your progress all the time. Adhere to negotiated schedules. In case you need to make a presentation, you have been invited to make a presentation anywhere. Don't do it alone. Do it with your supervisor. Address um, your work to them. Let them make useful inputs. Incorporate those useful inputs. And if they need to go with you, invite them 
let them go with you to the seminar or workshop where you have to make the presentation. There should be mutual responsibilities, which I have outlined, and which should be this will need to understand these responsibilities. Nevertheless, you as a supervisee should show a lot of independence and ability to man manage problems at every stage of your work. You need to show a lot of independence. You mustn't show over-reliance on your supervisor. Sometimes some supervisors find it intolerable. They cannot accommodate that. So show a lot of independence. That comes with the maturity I spoke about earlier on. The positive attitude has already been um, spoken about as far as the supervisee is concerned. And as much as possible, I will want supervisors to show professional attitudes. They must execute professional attitudes in this case. Um, you mustn't be over familiar, for example, with your female supervisees. They might misinterpret that kind of relationship. Okay. Reflect on your progress as a supervisee and work consistently to develop your skills and your knowledge. Remember that your supervisor is always there for you. Use your supervisor's advice and be open to feedback. Most of these feedbacks are often constructive, often very constructive. Remember that supervisors are experienced people who know how to behave with you. Use their advice all the time. If you do not understand anything, feel free to go back to them, as has been said. Maintain regular contact. Maintain this regular contact with your supervisor. It all comes back again to keeping your timelines. Make your um, contacts open. If you change your phone numbers, quickly let them know. They are your right hand. You need them. They need you also, but you need them more. Be honest and open about your work. This has been talked about already. Don't bring people's work. Often we see students who have different um, reference lists attached to their work. They have different citations within the work and they have beautifully made reference lists, which cannot, not one of them can be found in their work. Immediately a supervisor sees this, the supervisor knows there is a kind of dishonesty somewhere. There is a kind of copying somewhere. Perhaps something Tamounting even to tantamounting even to plagiarism. Sometimes a student presents something on biology, then they go to fixing something on chemistry and then physics, when they are perhaps a biology or a chemistry or a physics student. You are showing dishonesty, presenting something which is not yours, copying from bits, bits and pieces here and there. No supervisor will want to accommodate such a thing. So please be honest about the work that you do in your presentation. Whenever you need help, if your supervisor cannot um, give you that kind of help, they will recommend somebody who is an expert in the kind of help that you need. But by all means, don't cheat. I already spoke about meeting deadlines with your supervisor or else they think you are not hardworking enough. We need to make the most out of this relationship. Quite often, our PhD products tend to come back to our department as faculty members. If you're able to make most, the most out of this relationship, it is your supervisor who will often recommend you to faculty members that this particular supervisee worked so hard and knows so much about research and is not, uh, full of content knowledge and can help other members. So you need to make the most out of your relationship with your supervisor. 
before you embark on your research work in properly in NS, during the research working relationship. And even after the research, you need to maintain a good working relationship or a good cordial relationship with your supervisor. Once you are on the program and in the relationship with your supervisor, you could subtly, if you meet him once a month or once every three months, or however, in order for you to gain more in the relationship, you can subtly, even without your supervisor knowing, increase your contact periods with them so that you can gain more knowledge and then be able to complete your work on schedule or before schedule. We have had students who have completed their works, not only within schedule, but before schedule, because of good relationships that they were able to keep with their supervisors. So see how you can work on it, on this one. But please, don't make it become overbearing not the kind of person you are dealing with and see whether you can push in the trick. We have already talked about the next one, which is informing your supervisor early enough if you cannot meet a deadline or if a, dead, um, a meeting has been agreed upon, but suddenly an emergency crops up so that you have to go away or something. Remember to inform them and then find out the available times. Mutually fix a new date for another meeting. Be the one to try to uh, talk about fixing a new date. Or else your supervisor might only say, okay, agree to the fact that you cannot meet at that time. And they will just be waiting for you. So be the one to initiate another meeting. That shows your seriousness. Maintaining a good working relationship has many benefits, many, many benefits. Both you and your supervisor will benefit in this relationship if it is managed very well. Remember that as you communicate with your supervisor, as you, he helps you to structure your literature and all other parts of your work so that uh, reading flows very well and every person can enjoy reading your work. In a way, he's making you a good communicator. So your communication skills are enhanced through this relationship if you manage it properly. You learn diplomatic skills that will make you a successful person in, in any career that you pursue. You, be, you develop these skills as you learn to manage your supervisor. So you learn to develop diplomatic skills. You speak diplomatically, behave diplomatically, you know, sometimes even advise your supervisor in a, a, a manner that they do not even realize you are the one who is advising them. In this way, you have been able to enhance the diplomacy through development of diplomatic skills. Because you learn to keep timelines with your supervisor, you become a good manager of competing demand. You are able to do many things and do them well within given timelines. You learn to adapt to changing circumstances in a mature and constructive manner. This all comes about because of the diplomacy that you develop. If you are able to manage and maintain a good relationship with your supervisor, you learn to possess and you are able to exhibit good judgment in many situations that you encounter. Above all, you gain excellence in wisdom. You help to move your, yourself on in life you move your uh, department and faculty on and you move the entire 
university on. Of course, our university's mandate is to train you and um, to help your supervisor also to develop themselves, um, supervisors to develop themselves. So in a way, we push the university's mandate on. Even though it achieves it, we move it on also. So now that we as supervisors know what to do to maintain a good working relationship with our supervisees, and supervisees also know how to behave their roles and how to play them out to maintain good working relationships with their supervisors so that they can complete their work on schedule. What is the way for us as supervisors and as supervisees? As supervisors, we would have supervised one or two students in the past. We need to reflect on how these different students engage in relationships with us. We must remember that each student that is assigned to us is unique. They have their own unique, unique qualities. They have their own unique behaviors. They have their own whatever, anything you can think of because of the way they have been molded before coming to you. You are also a unique being. Therefore, see how you have related with people in the past. Use that as a guiding um, platform or something and know how you will deal with new students that are given to you. You could find out from students that you have supervised how you performed in your supervisory role after they have completed their work with you. That will be honest enough to tell you how they saw you. These comments are very good for us as supervisors. They help us to know how to move on with other people who come to us. Discuss how you, you do your supervision with other colleagues. Find out how other colleagues engage supervisees. Learn from them, hear from them, learn from them, and incorporate their good practices into your relationship with other supervisees. Expect, but above all, let your supervisees know that you expect respect and receptiveness from them. Of course, some can have their own way of doing things. Some may have um, show our best and all kinds of things, but you are the leader kind of in this relationship. So you must be accommodating of the behaviors that they try to put up and try to fashion them onto the proper way of behavior. That is our job. We must try to do this and do it well so that we shape our supervisees well through our relationships with them. And for the students, what is the way forward for you? in a relationship with your supervisor. To be able to maintain a good relationship, you need to be proactive. You need to be seen to be showing a lot of concern towards the completion of your own work and showing um, respect, acknowledging that your supervisor knows a little more than you and can help you out in this relationship. That is what we mean by adopting a proactive attitude and demonstrating it. Seek counsel when in doubt. You can seek counsel for some, from someone else, not your supervisor only, but do it in a manner that will not offend anybody in this relationship. Remember to play your part responsibly. We have already talked about the parts that you need to play, keeping timelines, um, informing your supervisor early enough when you cannot be there, showing them respect enough, um, incorporating their often very useful comments and so on and so forth. Take mature decisions 
that will relieve you of undue burden. You must take initiative all the time. Often supervisors in our, in our institution are overburdened with work. So a supervisor might have set up um, a meeting date with you, but they could forget. If you see that, um, if it's an online discussion or it's even a face-to-face -face discussion, try to um, put in a word, maybe send a message or call the supervisor and remind them that you have a meeting with them at this time. And so you want to assure them you'll be there on time. Remember to take the initiative as far as discussion of your work is concerned all the time. Don't wait for direct influence when you can easily act wisely in most situations. So in conclu conclusion, supervisees need to be very good managers of their research work. Manage and manage it well. You have had enough to help you to manage your work well if you have not been doing that in the past. Take bold but respectful and responsible decisions. That is about taking the initiative, finding out things you do not understand in a respectable manner from your supervisor, asking them to show you how to move on if um you are ex um, experiencing some doubts in certain steps that you need to take don't pass on responsibilities by that you have completed on schedule and so on and so forth but it's entirely your work and so you need to take full responsibility for everything don't pass on responsibility to your supervisor. Don't expect them to tell you what to do at each stage of your work. You need to think as a leader. That is what your supervisor is trying to do, trying to make you a leader. So try to see yourself as a leader, but you are a team member together with your supervisor. If you play um, the bigger role, or the one who has to be told what to do all the time. That will not augur well for you in the relationship. Try to stand up as a, um, a team player in the relationship. Don't act like one who is unsure of what to do. Act like someone who knows what to do. But you need to, in quotes, succumb to what your supervisor will want you to do. The bottom line is you need to be proactive as far as this relationship is concerned. And of course, your supervisor will be proud to say, yes, I have a hardworking student. And it's your supervisor who might even want to push you on all the time when they see that you are serious in the kind of relationship that they have with you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> hey. Prof, you are welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I missed the, the, the date, and then there was uh, Minister of Education, you know, uh, um, function also. That I was on the Zoom, <laughs> so got confused. No problem, no problem. <laughs> with the time. No problem. Yeah, but I heard a tape bit of uh, Ruby's uh, excellent uh, suppositions. Thank so, you, Prof. Yeah. Ruby, yeah, so thank Prof, you so much. So, Prof Ruby, if Prof Anamame has acknowledged that it's excellent, who am I to say as an initial challenge? I can only thank you and thank you. <laughs> for the time, the time you are taking to prepare and then to deliver this to be, at this level of excellence. Thank you so much. Thank you. Prof. And with my laptop not working, also, <laughs> suddenly not working. No problem. Once you are with my you, you have no problem. Dr. Dr. Tamanja, yes, Prof. I will also humbly want to identify and add my voice to <laughs> Prof. Anna Mohamed, sir. We <laughs> thank my sweet sister, Prof. Ruby Hansen. Prof, thank you very much. Dr. Lucy did an excellent presentation. <laughs> Prof, it was down to earth, and I think you tagged on every salient aspect as far as. Supervisor, supervisee relationships 
Okay. You are most beautiful. Thank to my you. Okay, so Prof, I, Prof, yes. let me. They, they have some concerns, and okay. I think this. I think this particular one you can address it for them. Okay. okay. One uh, Francis Lambon is asking, is that may I know the time limit for the parents and field students? Whether the shift of academic year to January will affect the time frame or is still the same? That's a concern you, for my friends. Uh, thank you, Prof. Tamanja. Yes, COVID-19 has come to make things the new normal. So even though we are COVID-19, I know for sure because we are all survivors. We are still working with our survivors. So I will plead with my graduate students not to make COVID-19 a problem. If there will be the need to extend it, it shouldn't be due to COVID-19. Because as I speak, so advisors can testify and, and add their voices to what I'm saying. We are still providing support to our services. We have been submitting and we are marking. So please, let us respect the new normal. What I mean, the conditions that have been created by COVID-19 and adjust and adapt to the situations so that in the end, we we'll all benefit. But I don't think there will be the need to extend because of COVID-19, because we are still surviving. There could be situations so, where due to one or two, it could be ill health. We are all human, so we could fall sick. So when such situations come up and we have medical report to back such requests, I mean, we are human, we readily support that and extensions are given i think i'm done yeah so just to add a little bit to what uh, professor kankama said uh there's no excuse you know uh we continue to work you continue to relate to your supervisors uh nothing stops you from sending emails to them on your work and so on and i'm sure your supervisors would not turn it down you know, this is the time to build resilience. You know, you adapt to the situation and rise up, you know, to even complete your, your work earlier than, than before, you know, because now you have all the time to do that. You know, you are in the house and this is your, your main occupation to write your thesis, you know. So uh, you bombard your supervisors with you know, your, your inputs into the whole thing. And then, you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know, that will build you into, see, Ruby was talking about leadership. <laughs> leadership is not just being a leader, you know, being able to adapt to situations and be resilient, you know, and that's, that's, that's the thing, you know. So I think that uh, the, the, this should be an excuse uh, for, you know, recharting the, uh, the the uh, academic year, no, but you no know, to know that this is <laughs> this is your time to complete the things as fast as you can, you know. Especially when you have collected your data, there's no excuse, you know, to wait and do anything else. You no, know, you do analysis and continue to work on it. You know. Okay, there's another. There are some other concerns. Yes. One, uh, Godfrey, that do wants to know, it says that, please, Prof, who looks for an advisor? Is it the supervisor or the student himself? And then another person says that, can the co-supervisor be the advisor as well? And then the other question is that, how do you handle the issue of conflicting ideas or directives from principal and co-supervisor? So I don't know who okay. will take this, whether uh, Professor Kola or Ruby. Yeah, 
May I say something about the conflicting ideas between co-supervisor and supervisor? I think um, in a good relationship between the supervisor and the co-supervisor, they should meet and discuss the ideas and agree because it will be somehow detrimental to even the supervisors themselves if they will not agree on something, the co-supervisor is saying something else to the, to the student and the supervisor is saying something else. The supervisor is the main person who is managing the, super, super, uh, the, the student. So it is very, very important that the supervisor and the co-supervisor should be able to meet and agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bro, I think that many of the concerns, many of the concerns are related. So let me just yeah. read them so I can address them as one. So another person says that Matilda says that what would make a student change a supervisor? And then Dan, Dan so says that please, how can one work with two supervisors? And then Ima says, uh, please, what action should a student take when a supervisor discourages the student in the course of the thesis through negative comments? And then, <laughs> yeah. so these are some of the other concerns that have been raised and they are very related, so we can tie them together. Yeah, I would like um, <clears throat> the Dean to, Dean, uh, Faculty of uh, Science and Education to answer that what will make one change his or her supervisor? Because I think it's going to be the, the, the duty of the faculty to, to decide that. So yeah. please, Dean, I think. Um, Thank you. Yeah. One may want to change one supervisor. Um, in fact, when the relationship is not good, it's when the down. supervisee and the supervisor cannot establish a good um, relationship, oh. and the supervisee feels very unhappy, you know, and is already experiencing psychological problems, it has ever happened in the Faculty of Science, then the supervisee might want to um, tell the graduate dean of graduate school about this for a change, of course, through the dean of the faculty. Um, it could also be that the supervisee, so what I gave was one reason. It's also possible that the supervisee um, might not be working with an overbearing supervisor, but the supervisee is one who could be lazy and might not want to uh, I, I um, accept the comments, the often constructive comments that are made by the supervisor. So this is another situation that might want a supervisee to want to change their supervisor. Often the change does not come from the supervisor. These requests come from the supervisee. And the reason is they always, um, they cannot work with their supervisor because the supervisor is over overbearing or asking them to do one thing or the other. But of course, when the situation is like that and one party is not comfortable and cannot just work with the supervisor, then you might want to, you know, give them a change based on humanitarian reasons and other things. Yeah. That is what uh, has been happening as far yeah. as I know. So what is the, what is the process? What is the process of changing a supervisor? Yeah, to be able to change a supervisor, you need to write through your um, head, through the dean, to the graduate school with reasons with reasons, but before then, you must have discussed the problem that you think you are having with the graduate coordinator. So together with the graduate coordinator, you discuss the issue with the head of department 
to find out if there cannot be a way to solve the problem. Perhaps if it's something to do with your topic, which your supervisor cannot understand or a change to your topic, which you are not comfortable with, then you, you um, discuss this and then it gets to the dean and the dean also um, sends such an accepted letter to the graduate school and with a new, with the name of a new supervisor, a suggested supervisor, and then the dean of graduate school may appoint a new supervisor for the um, supervisee, for the graduate student, if um, the, the issue is understandable. So that is the process. Well, I, I think as uh, uh, Ruby said earlier, um, if I may come in, um, this is a team relationship. And if uh, members of the team are not, you know, uh, <laughs> talking to each other in the same language, you know, definitely there will be a breakdown in the communication. And therefore, you know, uh, a student may seek to change, you know, the supervisor because of the lack of uh, relationship. You know, because without a good relationship, you cannot, uh, you know, really work well. But my own experience in the outside was, you know, my supervisor would even invite me to his house and we have someone and then some other, you know, things to eat and so on. You know, it's like a family, you know, so you have a very good, very good relationship with your, with your supervisor, you know, but when it comes to supervising you, he knows what to do. You know, you know, this chapter is badly written, write it well, do this well, you know, consult this and so on. He may not be, your supervisor may not be at the top of the, of the, of the, uh, um, that issue that you are, you are uh, uh, researching into. He may not be, be in, the, in that particular area, you know, but he tries to give you, you know, support from his experiences or her experiences, yes. you know, yes. to enable you to move up. And you are the one who has the, you know, you are at the edge. If you're a PhD student, you are the edge of the knowledge, you know, very edge of the knowledge, you know, and your supervisor may not be there, you know. Uh, and, but he encourages you, he pushes you and makes you do things in order to ensure that the scholarship, you know, uh, you know in, in your work, you know. So I think it's, it's, it's uh, you know, if that, uh, teamwork or relationship breaks down. Uh, there's no way that can continue, you know, uh, he will falter on the way, you know, and we need to give him the chance, you know, to, 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 to do the change. And uh, uh, even in the selection, you know, there should be somebody who l l likes to do it, you know, <laughs> and not somebody who is reluctantly, you know, compelled to do it, you know, and that also creates a problem, you know. I'm not interested in it, but well, there's no other bad person, so I've been asked to, you know, that creates a big problem, you know. So, uh, moderator, I'm seeing here on the yes, there are some other issues. Yes, somebody says asking... if my head of department is the problem and he's my yes. supervisor, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So your head of department is your supervisor and the yes. head is creating a lot of problems for you. You will still have to go to the coordinator, graduate coordinator yes. to discuss this issue. Mm -hmm. And I am thinking, it has never occurred, but I'm thinking that the graduate coordinator should be able to discuss your issue with the dean, the, the, the dean of your faculty so that the problem can be addressed. So at oh, this time, you might have to bypass the head. Who is the problem? I don't know. Perhaps other <laughs> members might want to. Uh, uh, can I come uh, in? Yes? Yes. Uh, yes. The graduate school has developed a form for supervision. Oh. And for both the supervisee and the supervisor fill the form. So if there's a problem, there's some, some vice 
should indicate it on the form. Okay. For the advisor to even see see it honestly. And I think once we operate in confidence and trust, and we can defend with all honesty what we put down, these things will be addressed instant instantly. Uh, and let me add to what Prof. Hansen said. If the problem is with the HOD, the HOD works under the dean. And once the form gives room for both the supervisor and the supervisor to give their comments, and on the form you see that whatever comment the uh, supervisor puts down, the supervisor signs, and that, that was also counter signs. So we are able to track all these problems. My humble suggestion is that I will plead and treat my colleagues that in summarizing our students, let us empathize with the students and for the students also learn to manage supervisor. every supervisor is enthused and motivated to work with a student who is very hard working. And I think if we play like that. We will all enjoy the supervision and our finishing rate will, be, will continue to be high. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Tamanja, I want to add uh, just a few. I think um, the issue of uh, supervisors will be discussed by uh, Professor Namo Amensa later on. I'm sure you know you have a date for that. But I think. Um, probably we can start to do something new in this university because um, usually in the Scandinavian countries, once you are a PhD student, actually you are not seen, seen as a student as such, you see, because many of the PhD students, as I mentioned when I was uh, giving my talk, they are probably working somewhere, they are probably even maybe lecturers and so on and so forth. So dealing with them is different from dealing with uh, the, the undergrads when they are writing their, 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 their essay or the, their thesis. So I think there should be a way that um, maybe senior people like uh, Professor Namo Amensa, Professor Kankam, once they are still here, they can start to give some kind of a pep talk to supervisors incentive yes they will be you know they will get the incentives but i think um, you know a kind of talk that a supervisor is a mentor it's not just supervising it's a mentor you have to because if you fail in supervising your student your student is complaining and he or she wants to change you then i think in a way it is the supervisor that failed the supervisor should be able to mentor in a way that you get your students somewhere, you sit down, relaxed, no tension, and then you discuss about the issues. And as I've said, a supervisor is not a know-all person. You know, he or she should be able to learn new things from the so-called students. Because we might see that uh, the student is bringing something new, innovative, and if the supervisor is not used to that, it's possible the supervisor will say, oh, no, 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 this doesn't work. No, 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 you can't use this theory. Then it means we are gagging, you know, students from bringing innovative ideas. Uh, thank you. But I was somebody is asking whether in UW students can be, or prospective students can choose their, their own supervisors. It should be possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the department, students are given the choice to choose their supervisors. But quite often, when one um, supervisor is overwhelmed, let's say in a class of 10 or 13, seven or eight students have chosen one particular supervisor, then the graduate coordinator may have to, um, together with the students, uh, permission be reassigned to other supervisors. So in the Faculty of Science Education, both MPhil students and um, PhD students have that liberty to choose their own supervisors. Okay. Yeah. 
Can I also ask you please? Why not? Yes, uh, normally when it comes to supervision, the supervisors are proposed by the departments through the faculties to the graduate school. And then the graduate school writes formally to the supervisors. But there have been situations where supervisors and supervisors have started work and it has come from either the department or the faculty that this lecturer has interest in the topic the candidate is writing in. It falls under my specialization. So I have had a discussion with Mr. Soso and Su, who happens to be the supervisor, and we have agreed. Once such things come, they are routed through the faculty to the graduate school and changes are made to suit both the supervisor and the supervisees. So there's also that to add to what Professor Ruby Hansen just said. We are okay. past that so, Rob, there's another question here. I think we can tie it to what your answer here. Are, are there available statistics on PhD students finishing reads faculty by faculty for the last five years? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. If you look at the graduate school, uh, I would say that for the past three years, our finishing rate has been high. Prior to the last three years, maximum number had been five PhD students. But for the past years, we have had 22 graduating at a time, 18, 21, 16, 17. As I speak now, as, as of three years back, we had about 11 students from the commercial campus who had been on PAD programs for between seven to even nine years, numbering 11. As we speak as of now, nine of them have all uh, finished their thesis. So in terms of uh, finishing rates, uh, we, we are not being badly at all. Okay. Yes. And we have the statistics. Oh. As for the MPhil, it has quadrupled. I just spoke about the PED, but the finishing rate for MPhil, I mean, it's more than excellent. Yes. And I think we all need to share in the joy and the glory of our students and the survivors. Yeah, um, what I would probably say is that, uh, you know, this uh, kind of aid should be made available uh, maybe on the website for students to, to know um, the um, completion, completion rates rate. yes, of our students. Okay. You know, somebody comes, you know, he started in uh, 20, um, 17, 2015. And uh, in 2020, you no, know, uh, or 2019, he has finished. No, um, that's the uh, probably what worries students that uh, you know they stay there, as you rightly said, 10 years. You know, you wonder what is really happening. You know, why they have not been able to, you know, complete. You know, uh, probably very small thing, but drags on and on and on and on. You know, so we need to. Uh, provide them with you know available statistics, you know, for them to know that oh yes, now now things are better than it used to be, you know, so that uh, you know they have confidence also in when coming to enroll in it, to uh, um, also feel confident that within four years, you know, <laughs> maximum I will finish, you know, and go, you know. Uh, but let me just ask uh, this: uh, I mean, this is a general thing where. When students first enroll as a PhD student, you know, in some places normally, the, as soon as the person comes, before he even comes, uh, he's given a, a temporary uh, a, a supervisor, you know, somebody who just guided him or her and so on, before the permanent uh, uh, supervisors are selected, you know, uh, so that this person will do the groundwork and so on for the students, guiding the students and so on. Um, I'm not sure whether we have something like that in the system, 
Uh, or do we allow the students to, you know, just gallivant for some time before we get the supervisors for them? You know. Thank you, Prof. As of now, what we have in place is that as soon as we give admissions to postgraduate students, the first two weeks we assign them supervisors. Okay. Yes. And even though we write to them, they have the right to change them in the course of supervision. Once the supervisor, the supervisee, and the deans agree as to why there should be the change, it's, it's flexible. We will change them. But the situation is that these days, the moment we give admissions at the postgraduate level, by the second week, we assign all the students supervisors. That Good. is the way we proceed now. Okay, that's great. So, Prof, uh, it's past 11. It's almost, it's going to half 11. Maybe Prof. Sir can come, can, he didn't, yes, he, could, he, he couldn't have the opportunity to talk to the students. They can talk to the students and the Prof will close the meeting for us. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Samanja, the coordinator. <clears throat> to my, my dear students, I believe you all agree with me that these sessions have been very beneficial. And if you look at the presenters, they have shown beyond reasonable doubt that they are seasoned presenters, they are oh. seasoned lecturers who know what they talk and what to do as far as postgraduate studies are concerned. So I will entreat all of you to take these sessions seriously. And I, Dr. Samanja, I don't know whether the slides will go to the students or not. I don't know. I'm yet to have that understanding. We sent the, the earlier slides to them. OK. And then, but we, we convert them to PDF and send to them. OK. Hmm. OK. Thank you so, so much. And then uh, so, Dr. Dr. Kaidu too will creating a YouTube link where they can, okay. they can watch those, the presentations on YouTube. Okay, and then uh, that's excellent. So my graduate students, from what Dr. Tamanja has just told us, I think the University of Education Winneba is doing everything possible to make postgraduate studies reliable and to help you do the postgraduate studies with confidence and their last week. And I think if you do these things, you will have the needed skills and the competencies to write your thesis. And I like Professor uh, Professor Johnson did say, PID is not a matter of writing thesis. It's a matter of or an issue of equipping you with the skills, the needed skills, so that in the end you get imbibed with that leadership skills and the techniques to lead a, a very productive academic life. It is my hope that we'll all take this session seriously, read the slides, and put them to productive use so that we will finish our postgraduate studies on schedule. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just also close by just uh, reaffirming some of the what uh, Professor Kankama said. Um, the series that we are presenting provides you with the fundamentals. You know, uh, when you start in a journey, you need to look at it. Make sure that uh, you have all the advance that we are providing for you. You know, it's not your subject content that we're looking at. We're looking at just the fundamentals that go with it. You know, and it also gives you, you know, the opportunity to voice what uh, your concerns are, you know. So you voice your concerns and some responses are given to you. So this is something that uh, really is open and then it allows, you know, graduate students to be themselves, you know. Uh, you are not an, under any compulsion, but you, if you take part in this, it helps you, you know. Um, 
and everywhere. I mean, you, you, if you're going to study outside, you know, uh, you'll be forced to attend some of these uh, uh, sessions, which are given in some places every month. You have, you know, one session going on or two sessions going on, and they are supposed to be part of it, you know, and uh, it's, it is counted, you know, towards it because it gives you those fundamentals that enables you to work, you know. Your supervisor may not be able to go through all of them with you, you know. He will not lecture you on that. No, he, he is going to look at your thesis and help you and mentor you and guide you, you know, to, to, to overcome many obstacles that you have. But then these are things that are so critical. Your relationship with your, with your supervisor is so critical to your success in your, your study. You know, how you should even write your thesis, you know, it's, it's so critical and so on. I mean, the, the character through that is a supervisory system. You build a character, you know, and the character is the character probably even of your mentor or su supervisor, you know. So though that kind of uh, uh, system, I think it's, it's, it's this, this is what we are providing you with. And I think uh, every student should make use of it. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of students in other universities may they, they see this and say, oh, yeah, why can't we also have it in our own place and so on, you know. So, uh, and you have uh, excellent, you know, uh, presenters to come in and share their ideas, share their experiences with you, you know. Uh, so, um, uh, I think take this seriously as the Dean said, you know, uh, so that, uh, you know, we can make UEW better than what, you know, uh, uh, it is. You no, know, and make it a first class, you no, know, research centered university, you know, uh, and that's what we want, you know. Uh, many people want to come and do their PhD here. So we can have, you know, 30% of, you know, the enrollment being PhD or 20% being PhD student, you know, we'll be all be happy, you know, to see that, you know. But you are the ones, you know, uh, that we are concerned with. That's why we are doing this for you. So um, take it up as a serial system, you know, that you will come back on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. so thank you so much, Prof, and everyone who has made time to come. And for the students, uh, we are still discussing with the IT department it might be possible for you to join as a meeting next, from next week. For now, they are unable to join. But Dr. Kwaidu has said that since the numbers have not been too large, they can allow the meeting format. Then we are working towards next week, if that would be possible. So we can see them just not limited to only the panelists. OK. So for next week. News. <laughs> Next week we will be working on, we will be looking at the teacher review and now we will make the adverts available on the Invasive website as well as the GraphSat leadership. In fact, I didn't know until yesterday that we have an association of KG students in UW. Hey. And they said yeah, we, we have been treating GraphSat as one. GraphSat as one. But we have association of PhD students in UWS. So. Are, they, are they recognized? They really I don't know. That, they are, somebody, somebody called me that they are, they are, they are, the she's a secretary. She doesn't know about it. That is not recognized. She says she's a secretary <laughs> of the group. The, the, so. dean of, the dean of graduate studies knows only about GRASAC. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. I mean, graduate, yeah, graduate no. student does not know anything about PhD students. <laughs> Okay, no problem. <laughs> but they have a secretary, and the secretary contacted me. Oh, <laughs> but it's not recognized. Please, don't let uh, uh, us have uh, confusion in the system. They, they okay. have to formalize that association. Yes. Oh, no, they they right. belong to GRASAC. They are part of GRASAC. And okay. yes. the, it is only GRASAC that is registered formally, please. Okay, so Reverend Joyce, for those you are listening, you have to formalize your group. 
Okay, thank but you so much. Is this so necessary? <laughs> no, no. Okay. But, but we want to urge the students to, in as much as possible, use the university's uh, website because we put all the announcements there and they say they are not aware, they don't see it. So please, students, make use of the university's website. All information about these seminars are on the university's website. And if there are any other changes, we will update as appropriate. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.